Why did God or evolution give us emotions? Well, think of emotions as a compass designed to help guide us through life. So just as an indoor plant bends towards the light of a window and away from a cold draft, we humans move toward things we like and away from things we don't like, with our feelings playing a major role in what guides us. Now we tend to think of feelings that guide us toward pleasure as good and those that guide us away from pain as bad, but even bad feelings can be helpful. For example, anxiety about an upcoming exam can motivate me to study well so I don't fail the test. Disappointment about not getting a job can motivate me to improve my resume and interview skills. An irritation with a coworker who keeps trying to dump his work on me can motivate me to set a boundary with him. So even painful feelings can guide us, but we also know that they can become problematic and unhelpful when they overwhelm us or paralyze us. So here is the really big question. What turns helpful feelings into unhelpful feelings? Understanding this process is a key skill for emotional intelligence. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. What turns helpful feelings into unhelpful feelings? Did you come up with an answer? Well, it's our own thinking. Let's look at an example. I just flunked an exam and instead of using my disappointment to assess how well I studied so I can make improvements, I began beating up on myself, telling myself I'm a stupid idiot who will never amount to anything, so what's the point of trying? And as the stories I'm telling myself persist, I lose confidence, motivation, and hope and fall into a clinical depression that overwhelms and paralyzes me so I can't even get out of bed and attend classes. Here's another example. I get laid off from work with 10 other coworkers due to downsizing, which of course is upsetting. But instead of taking a few days to settle myself down and then gather my resources to begin a job search, I react by telling myself I was singled out by my supervisor who didn't like me and then begin obsessing on plotting revenge. Thus, all my energy turns into overwhelming rage and feeling like a victim, rather than using my disappointment to motivate me to solve a problem, which is to find a new job. And now for one last example. I must give a presentation to my history class, and I'm feeling anxious. But instead of using my anxiety to motivate me to practice and prepare, I begin obsessing on thoughts and images of disaster. I imagine myself flubbing my words and embarrassing myself to the point of passing out in front of the class. As the stories I'm telling myself become scarier and scarier, I can't even focus enough to practice. And then on the day of the presentation, I wake up in a panic and can't even get out of bed, paralyzed by my own feelings, which are driven by the stories I'm telling myself. So as you can see, the stories we tell ourselves can turn disappointment into clinical depression, irritation into rage, and mild anxiety into panic. If you want to change the way you feel, you must learn to change the stories you tell yourself, which is the essence of cognitive behavioral therapy. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button. And if you want to hear more from me, then subscribe to my channel, Counselor Carl. I will be publishing a new video every other weekend. And if you'd like help in learning to change the stories you tell yourself, then visit my website, serenityonlinetherapy.com, where you can read more about me and the services I provide. And finally, keep paying attention to your life. Until next time. <music>